Good day, my schoolers. You are welcome to my school YouTube channel. You'll be joining me to solve the jam pass question for the subject physics the year 2013. Do not go anywhere. Stay with us and we'll be right back. YouTube channel and in this video clip we are solving questions 1 to 15 so join me as we start with question number one when a brick is taken from the earth surface to the moon okay its mass what happens to the mass that's the question so we should know that mass is the quantity of matter a body contains or um, the stuff that a matter is made of so mass does not change all right so what changes is the weight okay the weight is just the earth's pull on a particular object so the object may have um certain the brick here now okay may weigh certain um certain amounts okay why it is on earth on leaving the earth to the moon it becomes weightless okay but the mass does not change the mass remains constant so the correct option here is option a its mass remains constant Question 2. The resultant of two forces is 50 Newton. Okay, so if the forces are perpendicular to each other, that means they make right angle triangle, right? And one of them makes an angle of 30 degrees with the resultant. And we know that resultant um, is the um, hypotenuse side. So we have the hypotenuse as 50 already. We have the angle as 30. So we find its magnitude. If we have to find out the magnitude, we are using the cos. So we are using cos theta. So let's go back to the whiteboard where we can prefer solution to this question. So we have cos theta right equals what do we have remember the formula for cos theta adjacent over hypotenuse right okay so that means it to be cos theta times hypotenuse and the hypotenuse side is the resultant side right and we have this as cos 30 and we have this as 50 Okay, so we know that cos 30 is 0 0.8660, right, times 50. All right, this can also mean root 3 over 2 times 50. Whichever one we want to use, they are both valid. Okay, so either we're using root 3 over 2, and that is root 3 times 25. Okay, this can be root 3 times 25. Or we can say 0 0.8660 times 50. So whichever of these that we use, we should have our answer as 43.3. It can be 30 or 31. There about yeah, 30. There about. So this is what we should have 43.3. If you multiply by this or by this, whichever one. So uh, let's go back to the screen and see if we can find 43.3 newton in the options provided. So where do we find that? We find that in option C. So option C is the correct option. Three, the pair of physical quantities that are scalar only are what? Okay, so when you talk about scalar quantities, they have magnitude but no direction. So vector quantities, magnitude and directions are present. So uh, we are looking at quantities that are scalar, that is they only have magnitude but no direction. So that is option A, volume and area. If you consider the other options, like in option B, momentum is a vector quantity. All right, if you check the definition, displacement is a vector quantity. Of course, length is a scalar quantity. You know, we have length, mass, time, and the like. So impulse is a vector quantity. So time is a scalar quantity. So all of these ones present invalidate op the rest option. So the correct option here is option A, volume and area. Question 4. A simple pendulum of length is 0.4 meters as a period of 2 seconds. Okay, so what is the period a similar, at a similar pendulum of length 0.8 meters, okay, at the same place? Alright, so when you talk about the period T, uh, the period T of motion of a simple pendulum, okay, so this is just basically the formula that should come to your mind, right? Okay, and this also means that T is directly proportional to 
L, the square root of L rather, which is the length. Okay, so I can have something like this, pi L. Right? So let's just make this as easy as possible. So we are given, for the first one, we are given the period as 2 and the length as 0 0.4. That will be 2 equals the square root of 0 0.4. Right? So that means we are saying that. Then the other equation now is, um, what is the period of, what is the period for the um, simple pendulum of length 0 0.8 meters? So the length is 0 0.8 meters. But we are asked to find the period t. What can we do? We can cross multiply, right? So we have this 2 times square root of 0 0.8, right, equals t times square root of 0 0.4, right? So with this, you can decide to divide or through, or you can decide to remove the square, the square root here by squaring both sides, whichever you want to do works out perfectly okay so i can have this right that means two raised to power two we have four isn't it um root 0 0.8 raised to power two is still 0 0.8 okay equals c square right times 0 0.4 dividing both sides by 0 0.4 Okay, this year one, this year two, isn't it? So two times four, we have eight. So eight equals to t square, or t equals the square root of eight, right? And this can still mean two root two. Two times two, four, four times two, that's eight. Okay, so let's see if we have this two root two in the options provided. So join me as we go back to the screen to select the correct option. So we can find that in option C. So option C is the correct option. Question five. A train with an initial velocity of 20 meter per second is subjected to a uniform deceleration. So that is going to carry a negative sign. That is minus two, all right? The time required to bring the train to a complete halt is what? So we can decide to use um, the first equation of motion, all right, which is um, this. We know that this is zero. The initial velocity we are told is 20. We had it all plus the acceleration, deceleration now, which is negative, times the time t that we are looking for. So we have zero equals to 20 plus times minus, we have minus 2t. If t crosses over, it becomes positive. So we have 2t equals 20, dividing both sides by 2. So I have t equals 10 seconds. So let's see if we can find 10 seconds in the options provided. So scan through the options with me and you find that in option B. So option B is the correct option. Don't forget that you can get any of the My School tools. All you need to do is to click on the link in the description below. It's going to move you to the My School website. There you can get the My School mobile app or the My School software. So join me as we tackle question 6. Calculate the apparent weight loss of a man weighing 70 kg in an elevator, okay, moving downwards with an acceleration of 1.5 meter per second squared. So this is what we should know. When it comes to apparent weight, if the um, lift is stationary, it's not moving, you can have mg, all right? But if it is going upward, you have m into bracket a plus g. But now we are told from the question is going downwards. That will be m into bracket g minus a. So this is what we are using. This is stationary. Okay, this is moving upward. Then this is downward. So which is what the question points to us. So we are given the mass of the man as 70. Acceleration due to gravity, that is 10, minus what we are given in the question um, with an acceleration, the lift, the elevator, moving downwards with an acceleration of 1.5. Okay, so that implies 70 times, when we minus this, it should give us 8.5. Okay, so and that should give us 595 Newton. So let's see if we have this in the options provided. So if you scan through the options provided, we find that in option B. So option B is the correct option. Do not forget to hit that like button. Also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notifications so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video segment all for you. 
Question seven. A piece of cork floats in a liquid, okay? What fraction of its volume will be immersed in the liquid? So, uh, we are told that the cork floats. That means the weight of the cork equals the weight of the liquid displaced. So, this is very easy to tackle. You just pick up the density of the cork over density of the liquid. So, I have this 0 0.25 times 10 raised to power 3 over 1.25 times 10 raised to power 3. Okay, so this is definitely gone as one or because when this comes up this is what i mean that is 0 0.25 over 1.25 times 10 raised to power 3 right divided by 10 raised to power 3 okay divide means minus so i have 0 0.25 over 1.25 times 10 raised to power 3 minus 3 3 raised to power 3 is 0 10 raised to power 0 is 1 so that's why i said this is gone okay so i have 0 0.25 divided by 1.25 this is year one this is year five so one divided by five is 0 0.2 if you want to try this out remember our long division method okay so we have this inside this outside five in one that cannot work so we have zero points right then we had zero here five in ten that is two five times two we have ten ten minus ten we have zero so that is how we got 0 0.2. So I hope this is helpful. Okay, let's go back to the screen to select the correct option. Let's see where we can find 0 0.2. We can find that in option C. So option C is the correct option. Question 8. An object is moving with a velocity of 5 meters. Okay, uh, 5 meters per second. Okay, velocity, 5 meters per second. At what height must a similar body be situated to have a potential energy equal in value? okay with the kinetic energy of the moving body so i can just do this uh, based on the concept we are familiar with i can decide to say the kinetic energy equals to potential energy right from the question potential energy kinetic energy right so this is struck out so we are asked to find the height h so we are given velocity as five so i have one over two times five raised to the power two equals ten times h Okay, so uh, what do we do? We can divide both sides by 10, all right? So that is 1 over 2 times 25 over 1. Okay, dividing both sides by 10, isn't it? Times 1 over 10, okay, equals H, all right? So I can say 5 here, 2, 5 here, 5. So for the numerator, I have 1 times 5, 5 times 5. I have 5 over 2 times 1, 2 times 2, that is 4 equals h. Okay, 5 divided by 4 should give us 1.25. Roughly, we can say 1.3. Let's use the long division method to verify this answer. Right, we would have, what are we going to have outside? We are going to have this, 5 over 4, we have 4 here, we have 5 here. Okay, so 4 in 5, that is 1, right? 4 times 1, that is 4. Okay, so 5 minus 4, that is 1. Okay, we had 0 to it. 4 in 10, it can go 2 times, isn't it? 4 times 2, that is 8. 10 minus 8, that is 2. Okay, you drop down 0. 4 in 20, that is 5. 4 times 5, that is 20. So this equates to 0. That is why we have 1.25, roughly 1.3 meters height. So let's see if we can find 1.3 in the options provided. So we can see that in option C. So option C is the correct option. Question 9. If a pump is capable of lifting 5,000 kg of water through a vertical height of 50, 60 meters in 15 minutes, okay, so the power of the pump is what? Take note of this, we have seconds, not in half. So remember that power, you can take power as work done over time, okay, or we can further break it down as first time distance over time taken, right? So we have power equals the force is. 5,000, oh sorry, force is mass times acceleration. So we have mass times acceleration due to graph. That is 10. Or if you want to convert it to Newton, you still have to do the same thing I'm doing, right? Times the distance, we are told the height is 60. Over the time is 15 minutes, but you have to bring it to seconds. That is 15 times 60. Okay, so 60 
scorn right so we have five year three okay then we have five year one thousand okay so i have one thousand times ten that is ten thousand over three so what we we'll divide this what we should have will be somewhat around um three thousand three 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 right point three okay so i can just bring this as 3.3 times 10 raised to power 3 okay the unit joules per seconds or we can like i read the units as joule per seconds whichever one that we want to work around okay seconds underneath joules up so let's see if we have 3.3 .3 times 10 raised to power 3 or 3333.333 thereabouts where do we find that we find that in option c so option c is the correct option Question 10. Calculate the work done when a force of 20 newton stretches a spring by 50 millimeters. So you just have to use a simple formula W equals half Fe. Okay, so we are given half, right, times the force is 20 over 1. The extension is given in millimeters, so we convert to meters. So that will be times 50 over 1000. Okay, so I have year 1, year 20, right? 20 year 1, 20 year 1. So roughly I have 1 over 2. 1 over 2 is 0 0.5. I don't think we need to use long division to verify this. So let's go back to the screen and see if we can find 0 0.5 in the options provided. And that is found in option A. So option A is the correct option. Do not forget to click on the link in the description below. It's going to make you get to the My School website. And there you can ask your questions right now. And solutions will be provided for you by our solution provider. So join me as we solve question 11. What volume of alcohol will have the same mass, okay, as 4.2 meters raised to power 3, okay, of petrol? All right, so density of alcohol is given as 8.4 times 10 raised to power 2. Density of petrol is given as 7.2 times 10 raised to power 2 okay so um at first let's walk around the density of petrol let's get out um, the mass okay so join me as we do this so we recall that density equals mass over volume therefore mass will be density times volume right okay so the density for petrol we are working on petrol at first Okay, so density of petrol is given as 7.2 times 10 raised to power 2 times the volume is given as 4.2. So our answer should be 3,024. Yes, 3,024. So the question now reads that what volume of alcohol we have the same mass as this? So we know that the mass 4.2 as the volume 4.2 of um petrol as this mass so they are asking what volume of alcohol we have the same mass so we are looking for alcohol right so we are already gotten the mass this, this is the mass we are looking at so density equals to mass over volume right so we are finding the volume that we have the same mass as this so we cross multiply that is volume equals mass over density so we have the mass as 3024 over density of alcohol from the question we have 8.4 times 10 to the power 2 okay so when we divide this we should have roughly 3.6 so that is the volume that equates to this so let's see if we can find 3.6 in the options provided so we can find that in option c so option c is the correct option we strongly believe at my school that you may have better explanations or solutions concerning any of the questions we have tackled so far. Please, we are very much interested in knowing that. All you need to do, use that comment section below, indicate the question number and the explanations or solution you'd like to recommend. Number 12. Calculate the length which corresponds to a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, okay? If the ice and steam points of an un ungraded unguided thermometer are 400 meters 400 millimeters apart okay so i can just um implore this formula 
you can use this theta which is 20 minus 0 okay over 100 minus 0 equals this length we are looking for over 400 right so 20 minus 0 i have 20 over 100 equals x over 400 so 20 year 1 we have 5 when we cross multiply we have 5x equals 400 times 1 over 5 over 5 okay so i have 80 you can have better ways to solve this but i will just um, use this so x equals 80 all right so let's see if we can find this um, value in the options provided we find that in option d so option d is the option we are looking for question 13 a wire of length 100.0 meters at 30 degrees Celsius as linear expansivity of 2 times 10 to the power minus 5 calculate the length of the wire at a temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius. So uh, we can recall that linear expansivity talks about increase in length over original length times temperature rise. Okay, this is what I mean. L2 minus L1, right? Over L1 delta theta. Okay, so uh, we just have to slot in the values of these parameters given. So we know linear expansivity from the question is 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 5, right? Okay, then when this comes over, we have times L1. L1 is given as 100, right? Times delta theta. Remember that the final temperature is minus 10, the initial temperature is 30. Okay, so equals L2 minus L1, which is 100. Mm -hmm. So let's do this. So we'd have um, minus 100 times this, that is minus, four, minus 10 times minus 30, that is minus 40. Minus 40 times 100, that means I have minus 4,000, right? Multiply by 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 5. So if I bring this to standard form, this will turn to minus 4 times 10 raised to the power 3, right? 1, 2, 3. Okay, so 4 times 2, that is minus 8, right? Times 10 raised to the power minus 5 plus 3. Minus 5 plus 3, that is minus 2. So I have, from this side, I have minus 8 times 10 raised to the power minus 2. Okay, so this means that minus 0 0.08. Okay? So, we know we, all of this side is equal to this side. So, when this comes over, it becomes plus. That will be plus 100 equals L2. So, that will be 100 minus this. That should give us 99.92 equals L2. So, this is the length at this temperature. So, let's see if we can find this in the options provided. 99.92. Where do we find that? We find that in option D. So, option D is the correct option. Question 14. A gas has a pressure of 10 raised to the power 5 newton per meter square expands from 0 0.6 to 1.2 okay, at constant temperature. The work done is what? So when we talk about the work done by gas, what we are going to get is this. We can use this formula, pressure times change in volume, right? So the pressure is given as 10 raised to the power 5 times change in volume. That will be 1.2 minus 0 0.6. That is 10 raised to the power 5 times 0 0.6. Okay, when you minus it, you should have 0 0.6. So when this multiplies, you know, this is 1, then we have, okay, let me show you what I mean. That's 10 raised to the power 5, right, times 6 over 10. Or 6 times 10 raised to the power minus 1. Whichever one works for us. Okay, let me use that. Okay, so basically I have 6 times 10 raised to the power 5 minus 1 this right so i have 6 times 10 raised to power 4 so this should be your answer so let's see if we can find 6 times 10 raised to power 4 in the options provided remember that the units for work done here is joules so we are looking at joules so 6 times 6.0 times 10 raised to power 4 or 6 times 10 raised to power 4 option d is the correct option question 15 Two liquids X and Y having the same mass are supplied with the same quantity of heat. So we can see quantity of heat is gone, mass is gone. All right. If the temperature rise in X is twice that of Y, okay, the ratio of the specific is capacity of X to that of Y is what? So um, we can just do this in a very simple, even without solving. We are just told that mass is already constant, 
Q quantity of um, heat is already constant. So we are looking for um, the specific heat capacity of X to Y. So we are told that in X, the temperature rise in X is twice that of Y. So we are now asked to find X ratio Y. That is just one ratio two. And that is found in option B. So option B is the correct option. Right there, we have come to the end of this video segment, but there are definitely more wonderful segments to come. All you need to do is to hit that like button, also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get alert as soon as we upload the next video segment just for you.